Hello, welcome to The Morning Show with me, Martin King. And me, Ashling O'Loughlin. Coming up today, plans to cut home help and personal assistant hours mean for Rona Coughlin, who is spina bifida, that her independence will be compromised. I want to be independent. The PA is there to support me to live my life, my way, on my terms, as does the home help. And by taking those away, you take away my basic human rights and my right to independence. We're going to be getting her reaction to Minister for Health James Riley's plans shortly. Also preventing the spread of hospital bugs, we'll be meeting the winner of the Irish James Dyson Award who thinks he has the solution. Plus, after repeated flooding of his property since 2009, Wicklow man Barry Moles took drastic action two weeks ago when he dug a trench on the road outside his home. Once I had finished digging, I was happy, I was safe. I will not flood once there's a trench there. But like we can't have an open trench in a road, I know that, but it was an emergency dig. He's going to be telling us why he was forced to take such action. And former Green Party TD Paul Gogarty tells us about trading politics for music as he debuts his first single. But first today, last week's announcements of cuts to home care and personal assistance services has angered many. For Rona Coughlin, who has spina bifida and who receives four hours of home help and four hours of personal assistance care a week, cuts to the services mean she will sacrifice her independence. The biggest fright for me and the biggest scare for me is that if those services are gone for me, then I become again dependent on my family and friends. And it changes the relationship and the dynamic that you have with your family. You know, your relationship with your mother is, is one of a mother-daughter relationship. But then if it starts becoming more of a supportive role and a, a kind of a carer role, then it changes the dynamic of the relationships. And, uh, and that would be happening across the board, both with my, my mum and my brothers and sisters, and then with my friends. So I become more dependent on my family uh, and friends. And that just takes away my basic human right. Um, I want to be independent. The PA is there to support me to live my life, my way, on my terms, as does the home help. And by taking those away, you take away my basic human rights and my right to independence. <laughs> And Rona joins us now together with John Dolan of the Disability Federation of Ireland. You're very welcome to the show. Rona, will you tell us what services you avail of now and how that helps you have your independence? Um, the services that I have is that I have four hours with my uh, PA and I have four hours with my home help as well. Um, and of course it affects me directly as well but because I work for the Centre for Independent Living and I'm a support worker for other people with disabilities also I see the direct effect it has on those people as well and the feeling and the fear around people with disabilities at the moment is just huge. The fear is really alive and well within people with disabilities as it is within myself as well. And what would you say the main fear is? Do you think it's isolation and being cut off from society completely? It is. Um, if people's hours are being reduced and are being cut, they become imprisoned in their own homes. It's a very real fact for people because they might have to come in in the morning with PA services for getting up in the morning, having some food, um, and then for the rest of the day, they're, they're on their own. And then in the evening time, it could be the same again, having food and getting ready to go to bed. But for the hours in between, um, you're, you're pretty much on your own. And so out of home hours are being cut anyway and have been reduced so far um, that if those hours are cut, the people are, are going to become imprisoned in their own homes. That's a reality. And then there's a very real possibility that they could end up living in care homes which just is not cost effective. Yeah, it's more, yeah. It is. It's more expensive for people to be living in care homes than to be living independently within society. And of course people with disabilities want to be living independently mm -hmm. within society and be a viable part of the community and you're taking that right away from them. So you're taking away their basic human rights and the right to independent living, mm -hmm. which is what, what everybody wants and is entitled to. If your PA is taken away from you, yeah. um, you're a voice for these for, for, for the people and you're on the board in Dublin as That's well. That's right, I'm on the board of directors in CI. You yes. won't be able to get to your work. No, I won't. I won't, um, I won't have the support that I need to go to work because my, uh, with the combination of my home help and my PA, they come into my home, they change my bedclothes, they do the basic household chores, hoovering, etc. My PA would help me with tasks like 
going out for groceries, to bring in groceries, carrying bags, maybe going to doctor's appointments, the chemist. So all those basic fundamental mm. things that I have to do, if they're not done, then I'm not well enough to go to work in the first place. Okay, well, just in the midst of what you were explaining to us is, is also something that's very, quite vital and important to us. Mm -hmm. You spoke about doctor's appointments. That's right. Because you do need to go and have regular checks. You do need to attend f for different appointments. Yes. So it becomes, it n not just takes away your independence, also impacts on your health. Of course it does. Uh, it impacts on your health with doctors and as I say, with your basic well-being of being at home, with your house being you know, clean, tidy and bringing food into mm -hmm. your home. So you're not able to nourish yourself properly, you're not able to take care of yourself mm -hmm. properly without that support of your PA. And my PA is a vital lifeline for me as the PA is for so many other service users around the country. I mean, they're a vital lifeline. John, what is your reaction to James Riley pinpointing these sectors for cuts? Oh, there's, um, some of it isn't broadcastable. Um, mm -hmm. Look, it's like this. The Department of Health, the government, the Department of Health, Minister Riley, agreed on a budget for health in Ireland for this year. They said we're going to balance that budget by doing certain things. Uh, the, the, the whole issue of getting better pricing on drugs, uh, getting payments, more payments in from private use mm -hmm. of public ho hospitals, etc. Now they're coming back. The legislation to move on, the, uh, the, the, the uh, drugs thing hasn't mm -hmm. moved on. Mm -hmm. They're now coming back, in my view, in an absolute panic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Troika came in in the middle of the year and says, guys, you're way off target on the health side mm -hmm. of things mm -hmm. here. You've got to do something about it. So the new Director General of the HSC said yesterday on, on the radio, I came into this job two weeks ago and I was under a commitment from government to make 130 million of savings that I could actually make. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the real sting. They decided at the start of the year where they were going to make savings. They didn't do that. Now a new boss comes into the HSC and he's told basically, get these savings, but they're, they're, I don't want them on paper, I want real savings. Mm. And they go, and basically they've gone after elderly people who are vulnerable, a lot mm. of elderly people will become less able, disabled, and they've gone after disabled people. Nice, handy numbers as they saw it. Mm. And what is appalling about it is that they announced the personal assistance programme which is the star performer in terms of what the policy is supposed to be about mm. people living in the community, mm. being able to have their own preference, be able to get out, do courses, get to work as yeah. you've just mm -hmm. been talking about, and get away from residential care That's and right. people being, be, be, being uh, if you like, mm. overly cared for rather than being active citizens. Yeah. This, this was the star program. And what did they do? They say, we'll take 10 million off that a programme that has around 40 million of a budget. Mm. Now do the maths. Not, not a big budget really. Not a big All budget to begin considered. with. It's about half the budget that would be needed to meet the needs that are there at the moment. Mm. But leave that aside. You're now on the 1st of September, 2nd of September, whatever it is now today. The, uh, the, you're now with four months to go in the year. Mm. You have to take 25% of the cost for the year out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you have to do that because decisions that the great decision makers who went into government saying, we're going to do the business, we're going to make the hard decisions, they, s they set them out in, in, in the budget for the year and they haven't done it after eight months and they come back then and raid disabled people and elderly people. Does it's it like absolutely, yeah. and I want to make this point, Martin, it's absolutely appalling. Mm. And I think it's a matter that the, the government are meeting this morning while we're speaking here, the, the, the cabinet meeting, the first one since the summer. This is not a health issue. This is an issue for the government mm. because it's the government decides on, 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 on the budgets. And that government, mm. two nights before the, the election, the last uh, TV de debate with Mary McCallaghan, she put it to Eamon Gilmore and Enda Kenny, if you had one social justice priority in government, what would it be? And turned to Eamon Gilmore and says, oh, it would be the disabled. We've got to look after right. people who are mm -hmm. disabled, make mm -hmm. sure they can okay. work. And then the Kenny doubled on that. So they have ground to make up. Mm -hmm. okay. They have a hard but job, but they have so ground so to make so up here. They're looking like hypocrites at this stage. 
That's one they way are. of putting it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. And yeah. you know what? The really upsetting thing about all of this is that morally it's wrong. Economically it's wrong. It doesn't actually make sense money-wise. Because if you take people with disabilities out of the community, take away their hours, yes, they come become imprisoned in their own mm -hmm. homes, but then they end up reverting back into care homes again, which is just ridiculously mm. stupid thing to be doing because it's more expensive well, to actually do it that way. Actually, and I were talking before, before we came in, and we were just mm. saying, if, if our friends came around to visit us, yeah. would we want them to clean our house or cook us a meal? It would feel so awful if yeah. that was the case. Yeah. You want to sit down and have a cup of tea with them and have a chat and find out what's going mm. on. Yeah. 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 That's normal. Yeah. 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 You, 